this video and all other videos on this channel for entertainment purposes only. The content of this video and all other videos on this channel are the opinions of the creator only and do not constitute legal, trading, investment, or financial advice of any kind. Investing carries a high level of risk and the majority of retail clients lose money. Do not invest in capital unless you understand the risks and you are prepared to lose it all. All right, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel and this is the weekend's deep dive. On the weekend, we like to come back and check in on the base case hypothesis. I'm going to be honest, I don't think a great deal has changed. I do think the charts are improving. We do need to focus on the yields and the dollar. But wholly speaking, I'm probably just going to do what I always do, which is continue to repeat myself until something breaks. So let's get it. The base case hypothesis for the stock market was that we would run to all-time highs. We would see rate cuts sometime around the top, and then we would move into a deflationary bear market and global recession. It's also entirely possible the ultimate high of this blow-off top may even remain the high for a whole decade, roughly speaking, whilst we experience one of these lost decades that we saw here, 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 and here, whilst the oscillator resets down the bottom at the moment, okay, showing the familiar symptoms of such, but there's nothing, of course, to prevent this from curling back up and becoming a rip-roaring bull market that spans for many, many years to come. This is still the base case that we are in the middle of a blow-off top or towards the end of a blow-off top, and like I said, that high will remain the high for some time. That doesn't mean there won't be significant counter-trend rallies, but I, I'm going to term this a trader's market if this comes to fruition. The buy and hold will essentially yield nothing whilst we experience this whole kind of lost decade. Of course, if you DCA in, you might be able to extract some profits, but this is, if this is to play out, going to be a trader's market and is going to require a certain level of ability to buy the breakouts and sell the rips. When we fast forward to today, I continue to be long, strong and bearish, okay? Because if you really think about it, like I said, I had this idea. The idea was that we're going to have a blow off top and then crash into a global recession. And so far, we've done the first half. Whilst I am open and hoping to see this thing continue for many, many years to come, okay? Whilst having an uptrend that every dip is for buying makes my life as a trader far, far, far easier, it would be kind of strange and amateur of me to have called this move only to get to the top of this move and say, actually, no, it's a new paradigm. AI is here to change the world. <laughs> okay, the fundamentals are strong and back in this rally. I just don't believe this at the moment, to be completely honest with you. Like I said, the idea was we blow off and then we crash and we've already done this first half. So I'm thinking any kind of third and final angle violation here is gonna be me selling, me looking to hedge via the VIX long, which has been written here the whole time at the bottom in pink. And I'm gonna be thinking, right, until the market shows me something different, that would be something like this. Okay, if we break down from the third angle, bounce and then continue higher, okay, fine, I'll get back in long and we'll push this trade and see where the market can take us. But through all the parabolic blow-off tops I have studied and seen, through all the ones I've ever traded through, and I've traded through many of them across multiple different asset classes, when this third and final angle breaks down, it typically spends a small amount of time on the second and then the first angle becomes the minimum target. If we really are gonna get a deflationary component to this global recession, like I suspect we do, then we might even break down retest and resume. So again, not trying to be a doom poster, all right? Not trying to call for the end of the world. I've not been one of these people that has been saying this whole thing is a bull trap and, you know, <laughs> shorting and doubting this thing the whole time. In fact, the whole way up, I've been mocking and laughing at the bears and I've been super, super bullish the whole way up. But like I said, you know, the idea was we go up and then we crash down. And so far, it looks like we've pretty much done the first half of this. So I remain long and strong. You'll see the trades and stuff at the end when we get to the TA section. But the higher up we go, okay, the more vertical this goes, then the more I'm starting to think that this is a bubble that is going to pop and spectacularly to the downside. It's also of note that whilst we're in this third and final blow off top angle at the moment okay if we continue to hold this we are going to be at 6400 plus by the end of this year so at that point we are going to have rallied something like 27 or 28 percent in just three months for me that has all the familiar symptoms and characteristics of a blow off top another thing i think we need to keep in mind is nobody ever wants to sell at the top, okay? We get more and more euphoric, more and more greedy. There's all these narratives out there, but I continue to make the case that when we zoom out and look at this, okay, especially if this continues for a few more weeks, this will have all the familiar symptoms of a big parabolic blow off top. It will also be very, very obvious in hindsight if what comes next is this, because we'll be able to zoom out and say, well, yeah, the stock market went absolutely vertical. So as ever, I know people want to hear YouTubers and stuff talk in absolutes, I admit every single day, I have no idea what is gonna happen. I continue to take it one day at a time. I continue to be open to all possible outcomes. But as I said a million times already, okay, the idea was we would have a big parabolic advance and then we would have a big meltdown and a global recession. And everywhere I look, 
I continue to think that there's no reason for me not to expect that. So for Bitcoin, I had a very similar idea. Okay, the idea was that this cycle would top sooner than expected. It would be very, very vertical, very, very aggressive. We would get an all-time high before the halving, something we'd never seen for Bitcoin before. And this remains to date the only component that has not played ball exactly in accordance with my expectations. By the time we got into this neighborhood, okay, I was expecting one quick pullback and then a shoot to new highs and a top. And of course, what we got instead was somewhere between six and nine months of consolidation around the all-time high level. I do now make the case that it is very much still on the table we can see a push to all-time highs. And whilst I would love nothing more than to see this thing right translate all the way into October of 2025, simply because number one, we get a higher top, and number two, that would make selling the top very, very, very easy for somebody like me who is a cycle trader. So as much as I want to see this thing top in October of 2025, just like it always has done before, I am still expecting that this thing is going to top much, much sooner than anticipated and therefore have to spend much more than the 12 months that we are used to seeing Bitcoin undergo bear markets. There is also an Elliott Wave count that supports this idea and Tony the Bull, I've been showing this every weekend, okay? One into two, three into four with a throw under the channel and now we look for this huge rip-roaring near vertical rally from Bitcoin with a throw over of the channel. This would put us somewhere around 155, 157K and would complete the fifth wave in line with this schematic here. So, we're going to be able to either confirm this is in play or invalidate this very, very soon because any kind of continuation sideways, and we're clearly not doing this, okay? Any kind of pop up here that then rolls over and goes sideways, also, we're clearly not doing this. Any kind of back inside the channel and then kind of lackluster grind up, okay? Probably, again, not doing this. So, we're going to be able to either say this is very much in play if what we see over the coming weeks is continuation in a near vertical manner. And of course, anything other than this huge continuation in a near vertical manner, we'll be able to say, OK, probably something else is in play. And hopefully what we can do then is target an all time high in October. And hopefully then what we can say is, OK, we'll target a standard right translated four year cycle for Bitcoin, looking for around a month 35 top. And we can be able to look back on this and say the only thing that was abnormal about this entire cycle was that all-time high before the halving. Possibly that was just a factor due to the initial launch of the ETFs. So for now, I still stand with the idea that we are probably going to scream higher. And the reason I say that is the stock market is kind of leading the way here. And that's my thought. Now, of course, they can decouple. Of course, we could even see, and this is the dream scenario for most Bitcoiners, the stock market break down and Bitcoin become a risk-off asset. I just don't think that's the smart bet because when we look back in history, it's never done that before. There's a first time for everything, of course. So I'm not going to rule it out. I'm not going to be selling Bitcoin just because the stock market breaks down. I'm going to continue to treat each chart individually. But objectively speaking, the stock market is behaving exactly as I expected it to. And Bitcoin was up until here. Like I said, it then deviated away for a few months. And all we really need to see is this thing start to moon in the very near future and all of a sudden, this will have all the familiar symptoms of being more or less bang in line with my expectations. For the macro, macro is starting to get very, very interesting to me. I've long been making the case anything you do to the M2 rate of change shows up in the inflation on the CPI, albeit with a bit of a lag. We very successfully called this top down a sideways wobble, and then we expected a resumption to the downside. And I kept making the case that this perceived sticky inflation was actually just a counter trend wobble in the data set that would ultimately resolve to the downside. When we have a look at the inflation data at the moment, okay, this is the US CPI with an updated chart, you can see down, sideways, on its way to the downside. So, so far, hard for me to say that any invalidation has occurred. Of course, a hard invalidation would be a huge bounce and a rip to the upside from here. But as per this chart, I'm still making the case only this portion has started to manifest in the CPI here. And thus, we have still yet to see the true effects of the M2 rate of change snapback manifesting in CPI. Now, as it stands, true inflation is currently on 2.2%. Okay, so it is still moving in that direction. Of course, that is below the 2.4 that we saw at the prior readout. But I'm starting to wonder if there's maybe something else at play here. The reason I say that is just one month prior, Trueflation was down at 1.01%. And I covered this live at the time and I said, look, if this is anywhere near accurate, we are going to be in deflation by the end of the year. And so I think a couple of situations are potentially on the table here and I wanted to discuss those. The first is that this is correct and we've already found the bottom in inflation, in which case the next CPI print drops all the way down very, very rapidly, finds a bottom, and then from there we can talk about actually seeing the resumption of inflation. It wouldn't really fit the expectation, but again, it's not really my job to say that's right or that's wrong. It's my job to react to the data and stay on the right side of the market. So that's the first scenario, okay, that the true inflation data was accurate. We have found a bottom. We're about to see the next print drop like a stone before ultimately bouncing back up to this two neighborhood. 
neighborhood. Again, that would look something like this. I think there's another scenario at play here. This 1% was probably a little bit overzealous or a little bit overambitious and is not really reflective of the real prints. And thus this 2%-ish reading, 2.2, is somewhere in the neighborhood. And so just like in this sticky neighborhood or perceived sticky neighborhood, I should say, we went down, up, okay, down, we bounced around, up again, down, and then finally broke that range. I do wonder if what we possibly see is a sharp drop okay, followed by a little counter trend bounce, and ultimately it resolves in more choppiness before ultimately moving to the downside. So that would look something like this, okay, a sharp drop, a little bit of a counter trend rally, perhaps a little bit of this, and then one final leg to the downside. That would kind of fit. Now it doesn't have to be as choppy and as long-winded as that. It might just be as simple as we move down, counter trend bounce, and then resume to the downside. When I'm talking about this kind of thing, a lot of people get this mixed up and they think that I am calling for this just to fall immediately into negative territory. And whilst the M2 rate of change signals that, I have long been suggesting that we will actually need a stock market to crash in order to have true asset price deflation. We need to see huge capital flight from the stock market as it breaks down from this third and final angle as investors flee the stocks and hide in the short term perceived safety of the dollar. That will, of course, put a bid under the dollar, strengthen the dollar massively and help to drive this move down into deflation. But wholly speaking, I think what we can say is it continues to be right, so there's no point in doubting it. If we start to, like I said, see huge bounces or more stickiness and chop, then we can start to hold our hands up and say, okay, Camel was probably a little bit wrong about this. Perhaps we're not going to get that deflationary meltdown. But overall, so long as this trend continues in this direction to the downside, then I continue to stand with being on the right side of the inflation data. Another key component of this was if indeed we're going to break down, have a global recession, okay, in a huge bear market, then of course we would expect to see unemployment employment rising, we would expect to see labor market deterioration, and that is exactly what we've got. This is the initial jobless claims. On the left, we've got what we had in 2007. Okay, you can see it moved 29% in 742 days, and today, in the same 742-day period, we've moved up 38%. This, to me, is looking like it is ready to break out and start to really accelerate to the upside. So amongst a sea of narrative and investors out there saying, well, unemployment rate came in at 4.1%, it's not nearly as bad as it seems. The reality reality is there's all kind of leading indicators that are flashing recession signals pertaining to the labor market deterioration. And you can see that here, okay? Look how the black leads, the unemployment rate in red. And I know, like I said, and I've been covering the last couple of weeks, we got a 4.1 print, but the real number, as I showed multiple times, is actually closer to 4.5%. So this thing is still moving to the upside. And for me, alarm bells keep ringing because the Fed continuously revise the data quietly and lying about the data to try to make the macro backdrop look better and stronger than it really is. Henrik here has a coincident economic activity index in blue at the top, which includes four indicators, non-farm payroll, unemployment rate, average hours worked in manufacturing and wages and salaries. And as Henrik shows here, okay, we are moving to the downside just like we did in all prior times that we saw recessions. And here's the key part, okay? Take a look at this. We've got the signal at the bottom showing exactly the same signal that it saw in all prior instances where we entered recessionary periods. We've also got this oscillator, again, showing huge weakness to the downside, just like it did in prior instances of recessions. And remember, all of this is occurring at a time where people just keep making money hand over fist and therefore want to continuously dismiss any of the recession callers. I completely understand because there are entire accounts out there who have done nothing but call for recessions the whole way up and been totally incorrect the whole way up. And people have just had enough of it, right? But again, it's still difficult for me to get away from because the idea was we were gonna blow off and crash, okay? We've already done the blow off part and I really don't think there's much longer left. We already saw the rate cuts near the top. We already got inflation to come down and the Fed is clearly behind the curve with that, especially if trueflation is anywhere close to a real number. We've also got the labor market deterioration as I've shown you and a bunch of leading indicators flashing recessions. And so I humbly suggest that it is not the time to be ignoring recession callers at this point, especially when we've got this kind of look in initial jobless claims and leading indicators flashing. And speaking of recession indicators, the SAM rule is still triggering a recession, by the way, okay? It fell from 0.57 to 0.5 in September, signaling a recession for the third straight month. And again, a lot of people were quick to say, well, it fell from 0.7 to 0.5, so things are getting better. But that's not how it works. Any print above 0.5 is a recession signal. And thus, we have now signaled a recession for three consecutive months. When we grab a magnifying glass and look down here, 
Does this thing not look a little bit alarming to you? Not to mention, okay, the Buffett indicator has just hit an all time high. The Buffett indicator, of course, divides the total market cap of the stock market by the pertinent country's GDP. And at historical levels, okay, any reading above 150 has indicated overvaluation. And the current ratio is over 200. It's at all time highs. It's never been close to that before for the US. And this 200% reading, okay, suggests extreme market overvaluation. And let me be clear, that does not necessarily mean we can't continue to squeeze higher for a while because I'm pretty sure we're going to but I'm also pretty sure by the end of this year we're going to be able to look back in hindsight and say well of course the thing burst of course parabolic advances break spectacularly to the downside under the hood as well whilst people are pointing at things like GDP and saying look Campbell GDP is okay okay we're nowhere near a recession at the moment plenty of manufacturing prints are coming in significantly recessionary we saw New York Empire State Manufacturing Index come in at negative 11.9 versus 11 11.5 previous and an estimation of 3.6 okay again alarm bells should be ringing in my humble opinion market doesn't care we go higher up only I agree I agree with this the market does not care at the moment and that is why I continue to be long and strong but remember all good things come to an end and the more extreme we go to the upside the more likely it is we're going to come spectacularly to the downside shortly thereafter and of course, we're still continuing to see the consumer get annihilated. We're seeing auto loan delinquencies skyrocketing, similar to levels back at 2007, 2008. And the total amount of auto loan debt in red at the top here is way, way, way higher than it was back then as well. So markets can always continue to remain irrational for far longer than we can remain solvent. Again, that is why I'm not fighting such a powerful trend. That's why I'm still very, very much long and strong, as you're about to see when I go through the positions. We're going to get an answer from the dollar about whether or not we've just found a three-year cycle low very soon, okay? If this downtrend is going to continue as a downtrend and this is not a real breakout, then just like in cycle theory, okay, when we chain four cycles together, we would expect in a bullish cycle, three right translations and then a left translation, okay, to give us the larger order degree cycle. It's the inverse in a downtrend. We expect the first cycle to right translate, okay, and then thereafter we expect left translation, left translation, left translation to give us the one larger degree cycle. So we're going to get an answer out of the dollar here, okay? We've had a right translation now. We're going to be due a cycle low in the next few sessions. The question from there is, do we see another right translated cycle? Because if we do, I am going to officially call the bottom in the dollar. I'm going to say this is the three year cycle low. I'm going to scratch off this one and this one because that will be the extremes of the window. And I am going to be looking for something like this to play from here. Now, remember, if the stock market starts to come down from that third angle, OK, if we start to see parabolic advances break to the downside, we are going to see capital flight from the stock market. We are going to see people hide in the short term safety of the dollar. And this is going to put an even larger bid underneath the dollar as we start to push towards a deflationary crash all at the same time as potentially just being four weeks away from the coldest shock CPI print that we have seen in a couple of years. Again, all of this feeds into the idea that we may well not be far away from seeing some kind of big deflationary crash. So to be clear, okay, the first cycle is always expected to right translate. If the second one right translates, that is me calling the bottom in the dollar. That is me looking to put this big yellow squiggle back on the table and think that bad times are coming very, very soon. If instead this current right translated cycle then produces a left translated cycle that fails, okay, meaning it closes below the prior cycle low, then I think we can open up having one downside flush, finding that three year cycle low slightly later in life, and then expecting that deflation to play out from down here. So in terms of the dollar, we're going to get an answer soon, okay? We know this is going to be right translated. And then the question is, is it right translated thereafter? In which case we put on the big deflationary dollar rally on the table. And if instead of this being a right translation followed by a right translation, we are followed by a left translation, then we can say, okay, we probably have yet to find the three year low and it's probably coming slightly later in life. So super, super interesting times. And at the same time, if this 10 year yield and the two year yield are going to roll over now would be the time to do it okay so far lower high looking a little bit heavy looking a little bit stretched i think we're probably going to see this move to the downside and if we do then remember the bond market will continue to tell the fed that it is significantly behind the curve even now we're still something like 110 or 120 basis points behind the curve and if the bond market in aggregate decides to reprice yields lower then again the fed is going to be even later to cut than it currently is and that will put on panic cuts a little bit later in the cutting cycle and when we move to the two-year yield okay so far rejection at resistance now it can change and this whole idea is invalidated if what we see is this okay if we get a breakout here fine then we've got major invalidation but if this is about to roll over like i suspect it is then once again we sit here and say tell that to the 
the bond market. Like I was saying earlier, if we do the two-year yield minus the Fed funds rate, we are close to 120 basis points behind the curve, and that is going to get significantly worse back down towards 150 or 160 basis points if that two-year yield rejects at resistance. So again, the Fed remains behind the curve for cutting. A whole heap of people out there think it's going to pause at the next meeting or even hikes I'm seeing people talk about, but all we need to see is this metric move to the downside, and the Fed is going to be painted into a corner where it needs to cut quite aggressively. So pretty wild times, like I said, with the dollar and with the yields, we're going to get an answer in the next week or two. There's not much to say about the stock market apart from long and strong until this third and final angle breaks down. OK, but once it does, that's probably me calling tops, at least intermediate local tops and looking for shorts and looking for hedges via the VIX. Notice how the Nasdaq lacking a little bit of power here. OK, not got the kind of strength I would like to see. But so far, long and strong, let the stop do the worrying. The Dow Jones as well, still pushing this last position that we entered back here after going flat of the yen carry trade unwind. And again, notice how it's holding its third and final angle, okay? So this, again, if we zoom out, is starting to look more and more parabolic, isn't it? I will remain long and strong and ultra bullish up until the point we lose this third and final angle. But under the hood, I am internally very bearish and conflicted because I have seen enough of these parabolic blow off tops and traded through enough of them via multiple different asset classes to know that this does not go on forever. The Russell 2K has worked its way up to the prior high and is possibly ready to get that squeeze towards my long term target of 2700. Anything above that will be the cherry on the top. And I continue to expect the VIX to make a new low below this low cluster here. And then that is where I'm going to be trading a breakout of this red downward sloping resistance line to get some hedges on. And if we really are at the same time as the VIX gets down here and starts to turn around and break out, going to be breaking down from these third angles in the stock market, then I would think this VIX is going to spike significantly to the upside. And I would even be thinking we might be able to nail the top as this thing breaks down. So super, super interesting times. Sentiment is getting very, very one-sided. I know there is still a wall of worry out there, but there's also an awful lot of people that think there's no way any of what I'm saying is going to come to fruition. And slowly but surely, we would expect that sentiment to continue to be more and more extreme. Gold continues to rip higher. We've been positioned for this via some miners in the level three member section. But the other thing that I think we need to focus on here, okay, is we have had one right translation, two, three. So this one is expected to left translate before declining into a weekly cycle low. Now, if this is the case, okay, we should expect a left translation to occur for gold on something like day nine or 10, which is as early as perhaps Tuesday or Wednesday. So we're going to get invalidation for this setup. We're going to know if we found a true top for the weekly cycle, if this market tops on Tuesday or Wednesday of this week. And if we continue to run past that, then I would expect gold to undergo some kind of big blow off top move. Like I said, we've been positioned for this in the member section via miners. So if it does escape and shoot to 3k, then we will be able to still catch some of that move. But based on the cycles alone, we should be expecting this thing to top this week and then start to make a decline down towards that weekly cycle low window. Of course, last but not least, okay, Bitcoin continues to follow my arbitrary yellow squiggle. I still think that we are somewhere around day 43. That was the half cycle low. And thus we expect a cycle low to occur sometime around the 5th of November, give or take a few days. So again, long and strong continues to push, looking to add out of this cycle low. It may not follow my yellow squiggle. Instead, it may just do something like this cycle low and go. I would be fine with that as well and I'll be using that cycle low to add exposure. One thing I am noticing, and we've been covering about 10 or 11 of the crypto related stocks and miners in the member section, is loads and loads of those are looking absolutely fantastic. Many of them are breaking out. Many of them have made significant structural repairs this week. We're currently positioned in about four or five of these, and they're all sitting nicely in profits. So the crypto related equities seem to believe that this thing is about to reach escape velocity and move towards those six figure numbers. It's a wild time to be alive across the board. And as ever, we'll just continue to take this thing one day at a time. I'll continue to remain long and strong up until the point where things start to break down. And internally, I continue to feel very, very bearish and nervous and twitchy. If you're a level three member, look out for the members only video coming for you guys. There's a whole heap of crypto related equity positions that I think I can get behind in the week. There also might be a gold short if the setup completes and we do get a top on Tuesday or Wednesday. That will be very, very against the grain because people are super duper uber bullish on gold right now and understandably so because it's in a very, very powerful uptrend. But that weekly cycle low is late and is due. So with enough time and experience, you learn to trust these cycles as they do indeed give you an edge. Other than that, I hope you're all doing well in life. I hope you consider what I say. Other than that, have a fantastic weekend. God bless. Until next time, take care. Cheers. Bye.